Hi fellow engineers and today we're going to have a look at animating our Geneva wheel. So first thing I'm going to do is open up my project and there's our Geneva wheel there. All good. Now before animation I just want to check that everything's okay. So I am going to go across to here and I am going to first make sure that each of these rotates around the correct axis i.e. the middle. So I am going to hide everything that is to do with the pinwheel. So I'm going to hide the toggle visibility of the pinwheel axis. I'm in the part workbench here. You can't toggle visibilities on the part design. You have to be in the part. So just to let you know that. So I'm in the part and I've toggled the visibility on the pinwheel to make that hidden. And I'm going to do the same on the pin lock wheel embedded as well. So toggle visibility on that. And I'm going to click on the Maltese cross compound. And I'm going to go down to the properties and I'm looking at placement. And I'm just going to open that up and check that when I rotate this, it rotates around its center. So that's good. So it's rotating around its middle pivot point. And if I double click that, I can actually see that that's all good there and that's okay that and for ease of use I'm going to go to view and I'm going to toggle the axis cross so I know where the center of my world is so that's all good so I'm quite happy with that I'm just going to zero the angle back to on that one and I am going to hide that Maltese cross the toggle visibility of that and toggle the visibility of the axis as well. Now I've got a random cylinder in there. Um, I'll deal with that later. So I am now going to toggle the visibility of the pinwheel embedded um, object. And if I double click that, I can see my axis is off. I know that because this is in the center and it should be here. So when I built this, I didn't move everything over to the center and anchor it there. Um, but this is easy resolved, easy resolved. I've also got another video about how to do the change the axis of an object. And you might want to have a look at that. That came quite before this one. Anyway, so let's have a look how to change that. So I'm going to go into pinwheel. I'm going to open this out and I'm going to have a look at what I have got in here. So I've got my lock wheel pin, which I'm quite happy with. And I've got my pinwheel compound. Okay. And I've got my lock wheel compound. So I am going to hide the embedded object. So toggle visibility on the embedded ob object. And I'm going to deal with each of these ones separately. So because they're separate objects in there, see so I've got an embed there, which is involves my pinwheel and my lock wheel pin. So these two are, com are compounded together. Sorry, embedded together. So I'm gonna just toggle the visibility on that one. So there we go. So we've got a pinwheel and our lock wheel pin. And what I'm going to do is rename this one to just pinwheel embed so I know what I'm dealing with and I'm just going to double click that see where the axis is so that's good so I want to move that axis to the center here so click the top and it's quite easy to do remember we've got our pin lock wheel embedded hidden and we've got this pinwheel embed visible so I will be able to move this to the center point there. So I'm just going to move it there. It's about right. And OK that. Now, if I hide my pinwheel embed, I'll just show you what's happened. Toggle visibility of that and go back to my master embedded object. And toggle visibility. You can see that's now moved across 
which is great because it's affected the master sketch. Uh, sorry, it's affected the master master uh, object, which is great. So we just need to do the same with the lock wheel. So I'm just going to hide that again. Uh, toggle visibility on that. Right click and toggle visibility and go down to our lock wheel compound. And I'm just going to make that visible. And again, if I double click it, I can see that our axis is off. So I'm just going to move this to the center of the of the actual world. And hopefully the two will line up. So OK that. Make that invisible. And go back to our master embed and toggle the visibility on that. Now that is all centered nicely, which is good. So now if I double click my pinwheel embed, I've now got a center of rotation or a pivot point that's in the center. So if I check this, I can rotate this. Yep, I can rotate this, just zero that. And what I'm going to do is double click and move it back to where it was before, which is quite hard because I now have got this big blue blob. So look underneath. Just move that down slightly. And there we go, so that's there. So that's back to where it was. Hit top. OK, and then just check the rotation again to make sure nothing weird has happened. So that's rotating correctly. Sorry about that, I had to turn my alarm off. Um, so where was we? Yes, so I was making sure that rotated, which was correct. So let's set this back to zero. And I'm now going to place this in, that's all correct, in the correct position. So everything's good. So I am now going to make sure that all our objects that we want are visible. So let's toggle the trans uh, visibility on the Maltese cross. Right click and toggle visibility. And I'm going to toggle visibility on the axis as well. There. And this cylinder here, I'm going to remove. Let's get rid of that. So hopefully it won't break anything. All looking good. And now we should have a pinwheel that we can change the angle of, which is good. Back to zero. And the Maltese com cross compound, which also I'm going to change the angle of. That's all good. So now we're on to uh, getting some animation on this. And for this, I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need the macros and also I'm going to need the um, the panel for the Python output because our animations are all done in Python. So for our animation what we need to do is first create a macro. So I'm going to come up here, go to macros, go to macros and I'm going to create a new macro in here. And I'm going to give it the name Geneva Will Animation. So we've got now, now a nice new blank screen to actually type our macro in. And I'm going to put some base code down to actually allow us to start animating this. So the first thing I'm going to do is timer dot stop. Now there is a reason for this because we're going to be creating a timer variable lower down in our code. And if we get this wrong, we don't have to keep on writing timer.stop in the Python console down here. So start with timer.stop. And I'm going to say from pi side import the Qt core, or also known as uh, Qt core. It's actually, that is actually its name. It's pronounced Qt. So that's importing Qt. Qt core, so we can use it, and I'm going to create a variable called r for rotation. I'm going to set that to zero, 
and also I'm going to define a method or function called update and in here is going to be my um, my update function we'll define there but ah sorry let's define up that's it Def update and I'm going to tab over because functions in uh, Python are, are actually uh, white space sensitive so you need the tab to actually define it as a function so, it, so the body of the function is tabbed over so in here we're just going to increment r for the time period so r plus equal to zero and we'll create our timer so I've come out of the function now and I'm going to define my timer as timer equals and inside of the Qt core there's something called a Q timer and each time that fire that timer fires um, it will time out so it'll fire and time out so each time it times out I want to actually on that event run the update function so I'll connect that update function to the event okay and we'll start the timer start and we're going to let that fire every millisecond so every millisecond that fires it it will fire then time out and that time out event is raised which will run the update function and the update function is run here and it increments the time the actual variable r I've actually got to pull this in go global r tap this over so we can use r in within our, our function itself r is incremented here and from my slide, uh, side we've imported the qt core and first of all we stop the timer so what will happen take this and if all's okay and paste it down here first thing it does is stops the timer and then that's the code and starts the timer. So next time I paste this in, I don't have to write timer.stop down here. So this is running in the background, it's not doing anything at the moment. So that's our next task. So I'm going to use R for rotation variable for the rotation of the actual pinwheel itself. And I'm going to use another variable to keep track of the actual Maltese cross rotation as well so I'm going to call that uh, Maltese rotation and I'm going to set that one to zero as well and we're going to comment that later with some logic down here now I'm going to start the um, pinwheel off rotating in this logic so to do that I need to jump back to my part design click off on the pinwheel pinwheel embedded there we go and I'm going to click on the on the placement and use these three dots here and I'm in the placement now I can change my rotation so I've got, in, got this on rotation axis with angle so there's that one on there and I'm going to just change the angle here to something strange like 99 so that's rotated at 99 degrees and the reason why I've done that is that in our Python console under here I will get the uh, command to actually rotate this and I can see my 99 has been placed in there which is what I want so I'm going to replace that with the variable r copy that jump over to our macro and in here I'm going to place the line in here and my 99 I'm going to change to R so that should be the rotation of our pinwheel so I can test that right control C jump down to the Python console get a few little uh, enters in there so I can actually have a bit of blank space paste it in there no errors are coming up. 
we jump back to our, our sketch, nothing is rotating at the moment. Now we can jump back in to find out the reason why. Well, the reason why is because we're plus equal in zero down here. So that's equal, let's make that one. And now you can see that where this timer dot stop comes into effect now, because we just paste this in and our timer stopped. And you can see the angle is already incre incremented here. So all because of this little bug, we should now see this going around, which is good. So now we got to deal with the actual Maltese cross itself. So this is rotating nicely. So let's jump back in, back into our code. And you can see for a fact, uh, the fact also the angle here is actually incrementing over the 360. So you can see the actual, as long as our angle, angle is a number, then it will actually compute that to a uh, rotation of, of, uh, of between 0 and 360. The angle just wraps around. So I want to fix that actually. So I'm not going to use uh, deal with the Maltese cross at the moment. I'm going to fix that rotation. So I'm going to put a little bit of code in there. So in here I'm going to say if r um, greater than 360, ooh, 260, 360, then colon and tab in, and say r equals zero. So that will wrap r around now, so that will wrap our rotation. We can check that, copy and paste it, and we'll watch our angle here. We we'll see we'll go up to 360 and then back to zero, and look at our rotation. We've got no, we've got no jerkiness or anything, so that's all good. So that's working a treat. So that's kept it within the zero to three sixty values there. And next thing we'll do, we'll look at the Maltese cross, like I was going to do. So for the Maltese cro cross rotation, I have already have a variable here. And if we look, we're increasing r by one. So because Maltese cross has got to rotate in the other direction. I want to actually minus that. So, and also, I am going to set up a speed variable here. So, speed equals one at the moment, and I'm going to change that one to speed. And Minus it from the Maltese rotation here, minus equals speed. That's good. So we can change our speed whenever we like now with this uh, with this variable. So let's bring these in as well. And the Maltese rotation as well. Bring that in. So that's good. So yeah, I did spell that right, that's good. So that's all good, so those are in there. And we've got to do the same here for the um, rotation for the Maltese cross. So I've got to go and get that um, that object now, why it's still playing. So that's click on the Maltese cross compound and I'm going to jump in here into the triple dots. Um, you can't actually change the angle. I know you can change the angle here, and you get the command. This command won't work. So this is this only works in the GUI. So I wouldn't recommend going that route if I was you, because it won't. Because I've tried it and it just doesn't work. So jump into the three dots and again change this to a strange value. 99 and we'll copy that oops no. my home my home keys and enter keys and oh there I go my home and end keys are having a bit of trouble I think I've got some dirt underneath and stuff I'll just sort that out later anyway let's add those in here
didn't copy. Let's try that again. Those are in there. You can change this value to the Maltese, Maltese rotation um, variable. That one there. So that should be rotating in the other way. So try Control C and dump it in, and here we have an error. So in line one, if R greater than 360. Now, we know that worked before, so why is it having trouble now? Oh, I've got a semicolon on the end, I shouldn't have a semicolon on there. So that might have been it. Let's make sure we haven't got any white space at the end of here as well. Let's try bringing this up a line and see what happens. Is that our problem? Yep, that's our problem. So that was a ball down the line. So that's a, that was interesting. Sometimes Python can be a bit um, obscure of where the actual problems lie. I shouldn't really have semicolons in the end. That's me trying to program in C again. Let's get rid of those. There we go. So that's all good. So we should have some, excuse me, some movement now. It's brilliant. So we've got got the movement. Um, what we need to do is I'm just looking at these and seeing how they fare with the movement. So the timing needs sorting, and we need to stop this rotating after this they actually intersect and leave each other the pin actually actually goes into this Geneva world itself so let's do that now so what I'm going to do is stop the animation with timer.stop jump in and I am going to click on the pin wheel and I'm going to use the, the angles here, so I'm going to zero that angle and also going to do the same for the Maltese cross zero that angle and I'm looking for the angle that this starts to intersect, so if I change Maltese cross to 45 degrees so that's where it should start, so when the Maltese cross is at 45 degrees, this pin should come in here. So let's have a look at the pin and stick it let's stick it at an angle of three one five. Ooh, that's good. So that's zero degrees. Three hundred. It's too far. Three one five. That looks about right actually. So at degree three one five when this pin comes in, it needs to enter the actual slot and actually start moving the Geneva uh, or the Maltese cross around. So let's convert that to code. So in the code, we we'll go if r greater than three one five, and then we'll after the colon we'll indent and we'll start um, moving the wheel. So this is where we're going to move. So start moving wheel. And we now got to figure out when we stop moving the wheel. So we jump into the code, uh, sorry, jump into the actual wheel itself and so that's zero degrees and if you think about it we are at 360 it's also zero degrees so 45 degrees is about so that's when we will start leaving so any movement in between those two should be allow the movement of sorry any angle between those two should allow the movement of the of the actual Maltese cross there. So let's jump into our code, but 
looking at a code, we can't say if it's greater than 3, 3 1 or smaller than 40, then we're we'll going to get some obscure results. So, what we've got to say if r is greater than 315 and r smaller than 360, then start moving will. And then we're also going to say on the other side, because that will be converted to zero, if r greater than zero, stop. My alarm then, and r oh, smaller than 45. Then we need to uh, move will. That's not actual start moving will. That's actual move will. So we've got these, so they're good. So now let's fill these with an actual rotation. So we're going to actually just take this line and remove it from there and place it into here. Right, so that's all good. And let's paste it and see what happens. So we've got an error. If R greater than zero and R have missed the there we go. So let's have a look, check this over. Four five and R blah, blah, blah. so that's all good. Brilliant. So that should work now. Let's have a look what's happening. So we enter, it's moved, so it's very Hmm. It's not 100% right, but it's getting there. So let's go back to our code and have a look and solve those issues. So I'm going to say that if r greater than the 45, and let's take the bracket off, and r is stop bloody alarm going off again um, and R smaller than now let's have a look so when it comes out of here so it's gone in come out of here uh, actually Smaller than we've got 315 out of here, so we're going to do 314. Then we'll say the Maltese rotation equals 45. So that should snap that back. We should get a nice snap back there as well. So let's try that. Let's get a nice effect. Place that in there. That's looking better. It's all connected, so it comes in and it stops. So it's going in and stopping nicely. So that's a good start. We're still getting this coming, comes over here a bit. So as it goes in, you can see this actually. It's actually taking an arc through through this. So what would normally happen is that will go in and the speed of this wheel will increase as it exits. So we'll go in, oh, we actually need to enter a bit further down. So enter a bit further down, bring it around, and then the speed will increase when the actual uh, pin exits. So let's do that. So let's look at our entrance point. So this is our point and this one is our exit point so just some remarks in there so we know which one's which so now we know our entrance point and exit point we can adjust these so if I look at this 
what I wanted to say is that the closer we get to 360, the more we are in that slot. So 360 is here, and also 0 degrees is here. So at the moment we're looking at 315, which is about here. We want to get further into slot this slot. So I'm going to go for 10 more in there, so 325. And let's test that. Copy and paste it in. So now this should go into that slot more. There we go. And then we've still got to do the exit out, but that's much better. Right, it actually passes as it comes comes in. You see it'll actually go fur into the actual side there. So I need to delay the speed of this wheel. So, okay, so let's have a look. Um, so, I'll greater than 10. And so, this one here, I am actually going to do speed of minus equals the speed on. I'm going to double the speed of that. in there so it goes in so that wheel is now compensating slightly for yeah it's not going as far in as as, as it was But we need, I think we need to do a bit more and also deal with the exit as well. Because we're actually overshooting now, so I'm going to compensate for that in here. Um, actually, I think it needs more. So we do it three. a bit too much. Yeah, we're going further around so the server code is kicking in now. So I am going to do it for two and I am going to change this here. So I've got 45. So 45. Actually if I divide that by the speed, so we do 22. That should get us in a ballpark. So that was uh, 45 divided by the speed, uh, two times speed in there. So let's have a look, see what that's done. And we are definitely getting there. So if I come back in, I think it may actually. I'm going to make that free and now 45 divided by 3 we have 15 and go back into our code and paste it in there let's have a look at what we got now yeah, I'm happy with that. So, as you can see, the animation is uh, running quite nicely. So, that's how you would use Python to animate a Geneva wheel. A bit long-winded, but um, we got there in the end. But hopefully, you can understand why I've placed in the code. I will actually put this code up nice and big so everybody can see it. Um, let's get rid of the Python down there as well and just talking through it we'll stop the timer and then that's allowing us to actually when we paste this code in it automatically stops the code that's running so we don't have to keep on, on typing uh, typing 
timer.stop at the Python console. So this is our um, import from the Qt core library. We make up two, uh, three variables here, one for the rotation of the pinwheel, which I just called R there, and the rotation speed of one, and the rotation of the actual Maltese cross itself. We've defined a update method or update function, pull in each of those variables and we've changed the rotation of the variables here. So the first one is the, this one here is the pinwheel, yeah this is a pinwheel, and this one's the Maltese cross. We're using R and we're incrementing it incremented by the speed which is 1. We're saying if r equals 360 then when we wrap it around to 0 to allow us for the 360 circular motion. We then look at our entrance point on the slot, our Maltese cross. We know that's at 325 degrees. So if it's between 325 and 360 then we will uh, decrease the speed, the speed uh, sorry, decrease the angle of the Maltese cross, and that's to run it in a minus direction so it actually goes counterclockwise in reverse to the other rotation of the um, pinwheel. Yeah, pinwheel. So that's good. And then we also say if we're looking at 0 to 45 degrees, then we're actually. Um, from the gone past 360 and we're starting, starting back at zero so we've got to make sure we're increasing the speed the speed there but because we're on our exit line our exit route so exit in the slot I want to go a bit faster because otherwise we'll actually the, the actual um, pin itself on the pin will, will actually embed into the Maltese cross so we'll increase the speed of the Maltese cross by three times. Now, a normal exit will be at 45 degrees, but because we're going three times the speed, we divide 45 degrees by three to get the 15. So that will be our exit point is 15 degrees. And we're just saying here from 15 to 300, 314 degrees. So the 314 has come from, where's that come from? No, oh, that used to be 314. Oh well, we'll go back to that at some point. So we're saying anything above 15 degrees and below 314, then we make our Maltese cross cross rotation 45 degrees. So basically resetting the Maltese cross back to the angle that it started from. And therefore we have our rotating model. So sorry about that was a bit long-winded. Hope you followed along. And Follow me next time, where we'll actually create some paths so we can actually cut these wheels on our CNC machine. Okay, thanks a lot for now. Bye.